In our GraphQL server that we've built so far, we have a little bit of a problem, and that's that we do not log the correlation ID for every log line that we print. So if I play in a message here, you'll see that these are all the logs generated for that single request. And in the second line here, this request login instrumentation, we have the execution ID, but it's only printed on this line and on this line. So when it starts and when it completes. So everything in between, all this stuff, is not tied to one request because we don't have an ID that's consistently printed in every log line to basically collapse them all and say, okay, they all belong to one request. Now you can imagine if you deploy this in the wild, you deploy this live, or even if you have a couple of users using this, you have no idea what's going on. You have all these different log lines all scrambled together and it's very, very difficult to, to piece together which request actually triggered that action and tracing that through the GraphQL server and even to other downstream services. So in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce a correlation ID and this is a unique ID that will be printed when in every single log line, threaded, multi-threaded context, NIO threads, whatever, I'll show you how to propagate it to everything. And that's to ensure that at any time you can take any log message and trace it back to the original request ID and see the actual query that caused that problem or whatever it is. So let's get started. And I've broke this down into a couple of steps here. So the first step we have to do is actually add the correlation ID to MDC. So that's in our logs. So if we come in here, what we want to do is add a variable to MDC and MDC is going to basically store these logging variables on the thread. So that's uh, the, the thread local context. So that's the first thing we want to do. So we're going to add it here. So we're going to create a constant. called correlation ID. And we are going to add this execution ID to the correlation ID parameter. So this is a UU ID. And we can go ahead and remove the execution ID from the logs that we had previously. And that's because we're going to add it to every log via the, the console pattern. So now we just have the correlation ID in here. And then when the request completes, we're going to have to clear that. So we can just clear all the logs here. So that's going to remove it. So when the request comes in, we're going to take the correlation ID um, we're going to set that on the MDC map, which belongs to the logger, and that'll be tied to the NIO thread. And we take the execution ID of the GraphQL query. And in this instance, we are the edge service. So if, there, if you can think of like a line, this is all the external services. When they call us, GraphQL is the edge service, and it's going to assign the correlation ID and then propagate that to everything downstream. So that's why we're taking the execution ID because it's assigned from the GraphQL server. Otherwise, you can just take it from the request header and set it that way. So that's the first thing done. The second task is print the correlation ID in the logs. Okay, so if you're using Spring Boot, Spring Boot uses a base.xml for the logs. And inside here, you can see that it includes the reference of the console pender which we'll just add in the console log pattern. And that's actually defined inside the defaults.xml. So what I did was I came in here, I, I grabbed this and I prepared it a little bit because it's a pretty big string. So I'm gonna paste it in here. And the only thing that I changed in that is I removed some of the variables but the only thing I added in 
was this. So what I'm saying is I want the print in the color red, the correlation ID. So this is going to look in the MDC map for the variable correlation ID. And as we can see, we have it here, correlation ID, and it's put on the thread. So that will print out that message. So let's go ahead and run this to, to test at the start. So we should see that ID appearing in red when we play the request in. So here you can see that we have the request getting played in and E3, here's the query. And we know exactly that E3 has this query. And then we can see that E3 retrieves the bank account, gets the user ID, gets these fields, requests the client data, but then we still have these three missing. And why are these missing? Because these are executing, or sorry, well, this one, first of all, this is, so completed successfully in, aha, so that's, that's gonna be executed in another thread, yes. So that'll be resolved whenever we fix these two. So what we want to do is look here and say, okay, getting assets for bank account ID, and then this, and this executes in a thread pool in the bank account resolver here. So getting assets for bank account. So we need to propagate it to this thread pool. And also requesting bank account IDs for user, that's gonna be from the data loader from my recollection. So it's going to be executed in here and this is going to be executed in the data loader configuration so it's going to be executed in this thread pool so how do we propagate this id to these thread pools well let's go ahead and create a thread pool propagation um, class and let me talk you through that and this could probably be a video on its own to be honest so let's say uh, we're going to call this correlation ID propagation. Propagation executor. And what we're going to do is we're going to implement the executor. And it just has one method, execute. And why we do this is because on the completable future, its methods all accept in that executor with that one execute method. So we just have to wrap this. So inside here, let's put a required args constructor. What we need is a delegate of an executor. This is the real executor that's gonna actually do the work. This correlation ID is just gonna be used to propagate the MD3, MDC thread uh, correlation ID to the executor's executing thread and pass that through. So it's pretty straightforward so in here let's go ahead and create like a, a static kind of method to build it because i mean you want to have a new in your code doesn't look the best we'll have a bit of more fluent dsl so we add the new in here we we'll pass in that executor and i'll talk you through this after because i know it's probably a bit confusing so what we want to do is get the correlation ID. So import this guy. Get the correlation ID. And then this is where we do the propagation. So inside here, um, what we need to do is Actually, sorry, I did that wrong. What we need to do is actually fire it. So we say executor, which I'm going to rename to the delegate. And then we only run the executor, only run the execute command. And inside here, we need to actually run the command. And of course, this we're going to manually execute run because we want to do a little bit of work in between. is thread propagation stuff. If you've never done this before, it's a bit confusing at the start. And before here, so now we're in the thread, what we want to do is we want to actually 
put the context here. So we're going to say MVC dot put, and then we're going to put the correlation ID into that thread. And then when it's finished, we want to remove it. Right, so that should be good enough. So let's go ahead and wrap our executors. So it's one done, and then the next guy's gonna be in here. And that should be us done. So let me stop this and then we'll play it to test it and then I'll, I'll walk you through everything what's actually going on. So boom, play. And now that's it. We have the log for everything. So, and we can remove these. So let's go ahead into the listener because they're now redundant. Let's just remove them off. Let's start, let's play. And let's see what's happening. So play it in. Okay, so that's so here we can see we have the UU ID, the correlation ID with every thread. And we can play it in a couple more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Spam it. And now you can see all these logs all nicely tied together. So let me talk through one of these. Here, let's use the last one. So when we play in the request, you can see that we printed query get bank account ID and it happens in the NIO thread and that's gonna be the one that actually services GraphQL. So like the Tomcat thread, also known as. So inside this thread, we know that begin execution is gonna be executed there because it's the very start. And in here, we take the parameters and we get the execution ID, which is the unique ID assigned to every GraphQL request. And that's a UU ID. We then assign that into the MDC. And the MDC is gonna be used it's going to be assigned to the threads. It's like thread local store storage for your logs. So we assign that variable there. Then we went and we adjusted our logging format. And what we did is we added the correlation ID and it'll look up in a map to see if this exists. And if it does, it'll print it. So we need to put this in all the threads. So all of the other threads that aren't NIO, we needed to pass that correlation ID to it. So how we did that is for the data loader registry, you can see that we take the executor service, which is actually going to execute in another thread pool, so another thread, and we're going to pass that into this wrap call. Now, whenever you call um, dot .execute, so this, this balance thread pool, well, this will be executed from the computable future, and the computable future calls the dot execute method. So this actually going to call this. This is the reference, and in this part, we're still in the original thread because yeah, we had done a no op when we're basically executing in the same thread. So we take the correlation ID, which is available, same thread. We set it into a variable. Then we manually call the execute on the delegate. And the delegate is this executor, or sorry, this one. So it's actually gonna be running in the fixed thread pool. And when it's running in there, we have access inside here. So what we do is we take the correlation ID, we put it on the correlation ID. So now this is being stored on the thread pool's thread local. So one of the threads in the thread pool's thread local the correlation ID is now stored. We then run the command. So we run this code and that's gonna execute in this thread pool as normal. 
And then whenever it's finished, we always finally we, we remove that correlation ID so we get rid of it. So that way, if this thread calls another thread and that thread calls another thread, it'll get passed along. And then whenever they complete one by one by one, then it'll be removed, 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 and be free for the next thread to service its correlation ID. And this pattern is the same pattern that I used in the resolver. So you come in here and you see this guy. He is an executor, and the executor again is the correlation ID propagation executor. And that is going to pass the correlation ID from this thread, but executes this method. And it doesn't matter if it's, a, if it's another thread pull, as long as the ID was passed to the last thread pull, it'll just come down the chain and come back up the chain. So this is why we also get the, uh, the ID in this getting assets here. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this tutorial and it might be a little bit advanced but I'll try to I'll commit the code to github and then you can have a play about. It's uh, really fun stuff um, passing the multi-threaded kind of IDs about and it's also equally important that maybe you want to store the say the user ID or some kind of ID associated with your client on the MDC as well, as therefore you could propagate that down the stack that a particular user did something if you want, but the correlation ID might be enough. So guys, hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in the next episode.